This is Morgan Hazelwood, back again with more writing tips and writerly musings. Today, I'm here to share with you what the writer needs to know, the brain and the body. So as writers, we do our best to bring to life an authenticity of the full range of the human condition. Sadly, however, writers are mere mortals and can fall into some pretty tropetastic misunderstandings and assumptions. At the titular panel at Worldcon 2019, Daryl Gregory, Dr. Karen Landsman, Benjamin Kenny, Mick Schubert, and Hades Sloan were there to set the record straight. On Team Brain were Daryl and Hadas. On Team Body was our epidemiologist, Dr. Karen. Benjamin, as a neuroscientist, was claiming seats on both teams. And Mick Schubert did his best to stay out of the fight. So we started off with favorite misunderstandings in media. Dr. Karen's was nosebleeds as a sign of something catastrophic, when normally it's just it's been dry. Daryl's was the significant cough. <coughs> the character thinks they're on the mend and they cough once and everyone exchanges significant glances and two scenes later we're at a funeral. You've seen it. Uh, Hadas said on The Walking Dead, they did an MRI on a zombie. By definition, there should be nothing. And they zoomed in to show a single neuron, which is ridiculous. And they showed the electrical activity in blue and the zombie activity in red. And claimed it invaded the brain like meningitis. So wrong. So many levels. Mick's favorite misunderstanding is magical genetics with no epigenetics and also timing. They take a blood sample and know exactly what's wrong in 10 minutes. The tests in real life can take longer and we do a lot more tests ruling out what you don't have than figuring out what it is. It can take months in reality if you ever get a diagnosis for some things. Um, Dr. Karen would like everyone, including Dr. House, to know that oncologists don't do surgery. Uh, Benjamin finds it ridiculous with the human minds being uploaded in digital form or the AI minds being downloaded into a body. It doesn't work like that. Hadass, however, her career goal is the digitization of the human brain. The human mind's computational power is underestimated in most cases. And the brain, it's firmware. It's firmly attached to the body and its physical network. Um, it's fascinating and it's awesome, but we're a little further away than social media and links and stuff would have you believe. So, here are, I don't know, nine tips uh, they gave us on how to get it right. First off, with sickness, we think we know how diseases work. Wrong. We only know how they affect the human body. Drugs are far more often just guess and test than something that we were like, oh, it affects it this way, so of course this will work. No, we, we throw drugs at it until something works, and then we backwards derive what the science must be and guesstimate how we think it works. Um, secondly, our brain's perception is easily deceived. I can attest to this. I have a sister and there are some stories from our childhood I honestly could not tell you if I did it or my sister did. Um, a third random tidbit is there have been some cases of treating phantom pain from like lost limbs where it hurts but the limb isn't there anymore um, with mirror therapy. but. At this point, we're not sure if it's more placebo or an actual treatment, but I thought it was really neat. <laughs> Fourth, 
the human body cannot subsist on um, ingesting human blood. It doesn't have the right nutrients. Five, when exposed to radiation, people are far more likely to come up with cancer, like Chernobyl, than superpowers. Sorry, guys. Sixth, super healing would lead to massive scar tissue and cancer. Um, I think Deadpool actually kind of gets that one, right? Seven, super speed, and, and probably super healing as well, would require eating a lot, a lot, so much more. Um, eight, creating sensory experiences um, from the brain, like in virtual reality simulators, is very hard because it has to be customized per person. Um, and it's easiest when we just bypass the brain. That's how we're getting people to use artificial limbs and stuff, but it's... You, you can't just slap it on a new person. They have to have it customized for them and a lot of training. And finally, final tip is genetics are hard. If changing one gene would change a whole trait, we'd already be doing it. Most genes um, manipulate multiple things. And if you change one thing, it can have a lot of unintended consequences. So be wary of that. So the panelists wanted to discuss underused diseases that they would love to see more in um, in fiction, not reality. Fiction. So, first off, tuberculosis. Secondly, Black Death, not the bubonic plague. Research the difference. Third, influenza. There's a reason it kills so many, even today, with the flu shot and everything. It, it can be deadly. Fourth, underused, I, I might argue this one, but um, stupidity, it kills. And the fifth underused diseases in books and movies, preventable diseases like mumps and measles and chicken pox as an adult can be very deadly and tetanus and rabies, etc. If there's a vaccine for it, maybe remind people what those diseases look like because there's reasons we have went through all the effort to create vaccines for them. So next up, our panelists discussed books and movies and media that got it right. First off, Orphan Black, except for the whole brain uploading thing. Secondly, Peeps by Scott Westerfeld. Third, The Doomsday Book by Connie Willis. Fourth, Blind Sight by Peter Watts. Well, Actually, what the panelists said is he got it wrong and bad, but there was a great ethical discussion that was really fascinating. And finally, Lock In and Head On by John Skelzy, two books. So specific tips specifically for writers that they wanted to, to leave us with. First off, our job is to be convincing. Read and research as much as possible. Say and write as little as possible while still sounding convincing. Secondly, write to the limits of your knowledge. Then stop and take out half. That way you can only be half wrong. Third, you can always write from a lay person's perspective. And then you can claim the character misunderstood if you get anything wrong. Fourth, Remember, scientists have specializations. Your character doesn't have to know how everything works. Um, five, making magic scientific usually doesn't work. Understanding why it wouldn't work in real life can help you get it less wrong. And six, pick your premise, zombies, magic, whatever, but be consistent after that. A uh, final thing the panelists gave us just before they kicked us out is a helpful resource called the Science and Entertainment Exchange. I'm going to link it down below with all the book titles and stuff. Um, it exists to help readers and writers of all forms of media get it right. 
Their mission, according to their website, is to connect, quote, entertainment industry professionals with top scientists and engineers to create a synergy between accurate science and engaging storytelling. The website seems movie and TV focused, but um, Mick Schubert said it's for all of us. So click the link and feel free to reach out to actual scientists. Or if you yourself are a scientist, see if you can get involved and contribute. So parting thoughts when writing about the brain and the body, beware of the Dunkerning effect. A little bit of knowledge makes you think you know how something works when you're really just seeing the tip of the iceberg. Do your research and be sure to double check everything you think you know. And that's all for today. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, hit that subscribe button and share it with all your friends. It goes a long way towards helping people find me. And I'll be back again next Monday with more writing tips and writerly musings. Bye-bye.